You know what? Let's have a conversation real quick about hypocrisy and political spin. Well, good morning. Uh, we are going to do something a little different today. Today is Monday, July 27th. I'm going to start, um, well, I'm going to try. I, I always get ahead of myself here, but I'm going to try to start recording these videos in the morning and posting them in the morning and see if that allows for uh, easier viewership for a lot of the people out there. So uh, anyway, I <laughs> uh, had a long weekend, went with my uh, my brother and a bunch of friends for his bachelor party. Uh, we socially distanced, we were outdoors, uh, we, we, we played it right. And then I come back um, Sunday, film my podcast with my friend Mark, the gentleman and the jerk, I will link to it. We are finally on YouTube. But then we wake up this morning, we got some news, a couple different things have happened. We got something from the right, we got something from the left, and let's go ahead and talk about those things. First of all, I want to talk about Jerry Nadler. So Jerry Nadler, in case you don't know who Jerry Nadler is, he is a representative uh, in the House. Uh, he is a representative of New York, and he's the 10th Congressional District. He's been in the office since 2013. He's a small stature fellow, little little short guy, um, but he has been at the head of a lot of the things happening, uh, specifically with the impeachment of Donald Trump uh, this past year. So uh, this is Jerry Nadler right here, uh, this gentleman right here. And what he has made uh, news with, uh, he was caught this weekend uh, by this guy, um, Fleckas, Essential Fleckas, I guess it's a you or a Twitter account, uh, this guy right here. I'm going to play this for you real quick, uh, because this is actually, I find this to be fascinating. Um, let's see what we got here. That's happening in Portland right now. That's 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 myth that's being spread only in Washington D.C. About Antifa in Portland. Yes, sir. There's there's videos everywhere online. There's fires, riots. They're throwing throwing fireworks at federal officers. DHS is there. Look online. That's crazy, Mr. Nadler. Okay, so well, he finishes up here. Give him a second here to show how this finishes up. Thinks it's big news. Yeah, Antifa's a myth in Portland. Meanwhile, the whole city is on fire, fire, trying to burn down the courthouse. Yeah. Okay. So enough of that. So, and that's the loop. So here's the thing. Antifa is not an organization. Okay, what Jerry what Jerry Nadler is saying is not that, that that Portland's not on fire. It's not that there's not riots going on in Portland. It's not that there is not an uprising in Portland. It's not that there aren't um, groups of moms locking arms and veterans locking arms in response to the government led, basically Gestapo organization that is trying to quell the protests in Portland. What Jerry Nadler is calling a myth. What Jerry Nadler is calling a myth is the idea that it's some organized Antifa organization. Antifa has become this hotbed word for the right. This 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 scary boogeyman that they can talk about in order to quell fear, not quell fear, but in, to incite fear in the hearts and the minds of rural America, of suburban America. Because the Republican Party, especially in what is going to be one of the most groundbreaking elections in our times, they have to continue to stoke fear in order to get people to possibly vote for Republicans. It's been a tactic of the Republican Party for generations now. They've been doing it for a very long time, using fear, using fear not only to drive ratings to Fox News, but also to get wartime presidents reelected. George Bush is the last one that did it incredibly well. So when, when this guy is on here saying that Jerry Nadler is calling riots and violence a myth, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that Antifa is not an organization with a, with a figurehead or with any kind of logistical structure. What's going on in Portland is a natural, organic uprising. It's the people of this country, 
this case just happened to be in Portland, but you also see it in Seattle and other cities across the country. Enough is enough. Now, this all started most recently with the George Floyd murder. But now it's growing to become more than that. It's growing to really point a light on the fascist direction that some of our organizational government is taking. It's pointing a light on, on the inequities that we experience every day in this country, specifically people of black and brown color, but it's more than that. Speaking of people in black and brown color, we got this guy too, Tom Cotton. Do we know Tom Cotton? Here, let me show you who Tom Cotton is. Tom Cotton is a senator. Uh, he is a junior senator. He's from Arkansas. This is Tom Cotton right here. Now, Tom Cotton is one of those guys. He's he's the Tea Party type, right? And he has been uh, he has been known to be incendiary. He makes a lot of comments, and now he has done this. He called slavery in this country, slavery in the United States, a necessary evil. Quote. Now. Before I dive too far into this, let, let me try to rationalize what Tom Cotton is saying. I can't, cannot for the life of me believe I'm doing this. But what he's trying to say is that if it wasn't for the institution of slavery in the United, well, pre-United States, we would not have had the financial ability to fight against England and to have our freedom from the tyrannical rule of England, or or unrepresentative rule. I don't know if it was necessarily tyrannical. But regardless, his point being is that it, it allowed for industry, specifically in the South, and, you know, the the irony of his name being cotton, but it, the, the, you know, tobacco, cotton, all the other commodities that were plentiful in the United States, pre-United States, that allowed for uh, people like Thomas Jefferson to become incredibly wealthy. But there was plantations all around the South. That industry is what funded our revolution and then the, the, the growth of America following the revolution. So that's kind of the point he's trying to make. So just, just to play devil's advocate to his ridiculous language. But the, the 19, he specifically was being interviewed about the 19 or the 1619 project. Now this is done by the New York Times. I encourage you to go look this up. I'll put a link about this in the in the um, in the uh, description below. But the the sixteen nineteen project is designed by the New York Times to change the narrative in this country about our own history. The problem is that in the United States, our history is told from a white centric point of view. As the, as the victors go the spoils, we get to tell our own narrative. And it has been bastardized over the years to almost be wholesome. Not only, not only slavery being kind of whitewashed and dulled out of the, the common consciousness, but also the, the murders and, 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 and crimes against the indigenous people in this country. You know, we see it now with the Christopher Columbus riots all over the country. People take, tearing down Christopher Columbus statues. Good. Good. First of all, the man never even stepped foot on the actual geography of the United States of America. And yet he, for some reason, is, is glorified as the person that, that founded this country. But he's not. So the 19, or 1619 Project by the New York Times is really trying to work through information to change the narrative of our history, our collective history in this country, and to really point a spotlight on the atrocities that our founding fathers and the leaders of the early days of our country did. And Tom Cotton, which he's letting his racism show quite a bit here, Tom Cotton is speaking out against it as if some, that's some bad thing. Why should the truth not be the truth? Why does the truth have to be a whitewashed narrative? Why does the 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 first Thanksgiving, why 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 does the idea that we took and took and took and took from the indigenous people of this country and we took and took and took as slavers from the countries in Africa? Why does that have to be glorified? and painted 
in this white centric light. Now look, I'm white, I'm middle aged. I, I have some affluence myself and I'm against this, not against the, the project. I'm against the idea of the whitewashing of our history. It's ugly. This country was born on some ugly history. Now that does not mean to say that everything about the birth of this country is negative. It's not. We had we had wonderful orators, incredible writers, passionate people fighting against. I mean, certainly the UK or the, England was was tyrannical. They were an imperialistic country that took over swaths of this planet. So I mean, it's not everything we did was wrong, but that doesn't mean everything we did was right. And the idea that we are this perfect nation rose up on some kind of glory and 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 and, and, and you know manifest that that we are the we are the end all be all of what's right in this world. We're not. Right. In fact, right now we're we're the laughing stock of the world. Now Jerry Nadler is being demonized because he said that Antifa that Antifa is a hoax. Well, to a certain extent, he is absolutely right. Is there Antifa out there? Sure. What does Antifa mean? Anti-fascist. What are they doing in, in Portland? It's a fascist Gestapo tactic to make people disappear, to take them off the street without habeas corpus, to lock them up indefinitely without any indication of, of, of their legal rights. And so, yeah, you know what? If there is an Antifa, which is an organic growth and a, and a movement of an idea, that's great. But it is a myth that there is some Antifa organization with a president and, you know, on a board of directors, you know, Tom Cotton, however, you know, I don't see the right blasting Tom Cotton. As a matter of fact, on Fox News this morning, they were they were praising him and trying to explain it away and, and why it's appropriate and all that kind of shit. Well, it's not. It's fucking bullshit. It's bullshit. People like Tom Cotton are what is wrong with Congress and what is wrong with the Senate specifically. And it's why, most likely, Donald Trump and his insanity is going to drive the whole of the Republican Party right into the ground in November. I am beyond hopeful that we are going to see a change in the Senate in November. And it's for reasons like that. Because they can't get out of their own damn way. And, and if you don't think that what's happening in Portland and Seattle and Chicago and Minneapolis and everywhere else in this country, there's still daily protests here in Syracuse, New York. If, if that is not an indication to you in middle white America that there is a change coming, you are sadly mistaken. So anyway, happy Monday morning to you. That's what we have going on this morning. I'm going to try this for a week. I want to see if uh, if you guys enjoy this more and if it's easier for me to film these quickly in the morning and upload them. As always, if you're just coming along my channel, what I do here is I film live, no edits, is whatever I screw up, if I can't talk right, if I you know mumble my words, whatever, it all goes right up to YouTube. Uh, so if you like today's video, man, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're just finding me. Share this with your friends as well. You can find me over on Facebook, The Daily Octane. I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you tomorrow when I'm sure there's going to be some more crazy bullshit going on. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.